Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you like my channel, please like and subscribe. There's a notification bell down at the corner. So today, um, I had been asked several times throughout the year um, to, to show my place or my apartment as to how I've settled in and how things are going. <clears throat> so I thought it'd be kind of fun. Sorry. Oh, I thought it would be kind of fun today to kind of give people a tour of my place. And hi, Roxy. Hi, Karen. Hi, Megan. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do this tour. And I had been meaning to do it for a while. And I've always been like kind of um, a perfectionist when it comes to uh, ever letting anybody kind of see my mess. And so there's no sound. Okay. Um, is that an issue with everybody? Is that there's no sound? Um, hello? Okay. I'm not sure why there's no sound. Okay. There's sound. All right. Good, good. Okay. Distractions. Um, okay. So, I'm going to take you through um, kind of what I've done with the place. And I figured, you know, I would just leave it as is. I'm not a perfect human being and and I do what I can. So exciting. Um, and let me unplug here. And I'm going to take you around with here. Um, Dr. Nina, let me address this real quick. Dr. Nina, let me close. Oh, a reality. Oh, wonderful. I'll have to check that out when I'm done. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to come around here and I'm wondering if I can turn. I can, don't think at this one I can turn the camera around. Let me show you what it looks like when I first walk in. And this is exactly what I see. And it says, take a deep breath, you're home now. And that's really important for me because it's important for me to know that this is my safe place. This is the place that I can come and I'm safe and I'm okay and everything's going to be all right. And so we come in next da, 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 to the kitchen area, which as you can see is <laughs> paint brushes cleaning out. Then there's the microwave. Interesting. Oh, and my paintings, um, two that have not sold yet. So they're sitting up there, um, kind of trying to do this so that I can show you around. Um, so this is interesting, and not many people know this, but many of us who had to live out on the streets or whatever, especially women, are very vulnerable to assault. And whether that be sexual assault or physical assault or, you know, somebody acting like they're going to assault you, it's a thing. So this is actually the knife I used to carry around my neck, and I don't feel the need to do so anymore, and that's a big deal for me. Of course, I've got my French press here full of coffee. Now, over here, I have what looks like a big mess, but it's actually not. I do a lot of baking, so this is like my run-to baking supplies, and they're, like I said, looks like a mess, but it's totally not. And yes, there's a lot of chocolate chips, and I love chocolate. Um, <laughs> I know, right, Megan? It's great. Um, and here I've got what is to crush my herbs and things. That's a big deal because outside I actually have a little garden, and that's got all sorts of fresh herbs. So it's nice to come in and be able to crush those and use those as needed. Okay, so um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. If we go over here, like it's, it's not a big apartment. <laughs> I'm trying to make it more exciting than it actually is. <laughs> but I'm very grateful for it, and I'm so thankful to have this place. So this picture here, I love cherry blossoms. I I adore cherry blossoms. I really do. It's such a wonderful kind of spring, just joyous flower. And so, um, and I love photography. So when I got my place, this is from. Ellen Powell, who is a photographer, and she sent me my first picture for my wall, and that was really awesome. So, gonna come in here, da -da 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 -da. and this is my bathroom. As you, hey, 
And so there's that. And the thing is, with my bathroom, if you see, there's like a little white rug. And then a painting on the wall. And, you know. <laughs> but I like it to be kind of fluffy and nice because it, you know, I think that a clean, nice bathroom, um, the products up on the thing are a thing, I guess. <laughs> um, and one thing I do, oh, I was going to show you here. It's something interesting. This is uh, Epsom salt and lavender and rosemary that I grew. Not the Epsom salt. I didn't grow that. I ordered that. But I put lavender and rosemary in there. And so that's good for bathing. Um, jewelry goes up here, but I have an issue with necklaces breaking. I've been given some wonderful, beautiful necklaces and the chains always break. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just not meant for jewelry. <laughs> So I'm coming into my most relaxing room in the room that I need to be that way because I need to get really, really good sleep. And so this here is my bedroom. As you can see, there's a huge fluffy carpet there. And I love that because I can sink my toes into it. And then it's hard to do with the light off, but my bed. Well, mine in Rowan's bed. I, I really think she takes up the majority of it. And then, of course, my little cherry blossom lamp. <laughs> um, and then clothing and shoes and all of that jazz. So, like I said, not huge, but it's perfect for me. This is where my washer and dryer is. <laughs> and these right here. That's Roman Talters. <laughs> um, thank you, Lasai. Thank you, <laughs> Sandra. Uh, uh, Megan, you're meant for jewelry. Chains are designed to break. It's, yeah, I think so. They just break on me. And then I'm like, man. <laughs> um, so as we're walking in, this is what it looks like when you walk into my living room. And ta -da, I've got a fire going. And then I have my workspace here. And this is really important to me because I got it like, see if you can see, I think maybe if I do that. Okay. So with these desks, thanks to Liz, I have like photography stuff under there. I've got my sewing stuff there. And then when we come over here, I've got my workspace with like the chair printer. And then um, usually my laptop sits in that empty space. And then it's like my, um, my like little workspace so that I can get things done and kind of keep track of my thoughts. And I just recently got a desk calendar, which has been extremely helpful. Um, so thank you, C, on that. Um, so we come over here. And like I said, I'm going to show you my mess. <laughs> um, but it's not really mess. Everything has its place. So if we come over here and you look down here. I am working on this, and oh my gosh, so I'm going to show you guys this because it's actually really, really cool. I kind of fell in love with these blankets, and they're like chunky uh, blankets, but I learned how to start it and start doing it. So like I put that on my personal wish list as a yarn for this because I thought it'd be really, really cool to um, make for presents, make for my daughters, whatever. And I've got yarn. I've got my painting supplies. Um, yeah, I've kind of got everything that, you know, I need tucked away here. Up on top here, I've got my photography supplies. And then way on top, I've got my ginger plant that had to come in because it was really cold. So this is my place. I absolutely adore it. Um, above my couch, there was a painting, but I decided I do this a lot. I'll kind of change out my paintings, which is nice because I can paint so I can do it real easy. <laughs> so I'm in the middle of that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. That's my place. So we've all had a tour. Um, I'm really comfortable here and, and I'm thankful to have a safe spot. I'm thankful to be able to say, come home and breathe. It's going to be all right. You know, it's in the end, it's okay. And so now I'm going to get to answering questions. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, I know that there was one up here. Let me see. 
evil doctor mainstream. Okay, very interesting. Um, people ask me that a lot. What, let's see, I am blessed to have a home. Um, of course, I think, you know, all of us with a home are definitely blessed. Um, but I really truly believe it's a human right. Um, I want people to get to the point that they know for a fact that to be healthy, you need a safe, stable environment. And that is, that is housing. Um, so, um, on the homelessness issue, for me, it really depends. Thank you, Roxy. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, on the homelessness issue, for me, the first time I was homeless uh, was as a child. And at first, you know, now looking back, I realize it even more. But at first, I just knew that we were poor. And it became more and more clear as, you know, once you realize that, you know, not only are you impoverished, but there's significant severe abuse going on. Um, and then when you enter into a situation such as the foster care system, like I did, it is very unstable because you know at any time you can be moved home from home. Um, it's just not even, you know, even the most secure environments are still insecure um, because it shapes our framework. You know, our childhood shapes our framework for what what we do and how we go about things. So if you're going to ask what led to that homelessness, that would definitely be not my fault. <laughs> um, trauma, for sure. Um, and in the second instance, when um, I was a teenage runaway from the state system at 15, I went and tried to find my mother. Um, that was definitely um, traumatic. And but still, I didn't, you know, I was a runaway, not homeless. You know, there were ways of telling myself somehow that I wasn't like everyone else, when in fact is I am. And that gives me a commonality. That gives me a place to work from. And it gives me compassion in order to be able to understand that. Now, when I look at the adult challenges, I know so many times that I was on the cusp of homelessness with my kids. It was constantly one hustle after another hustle after another hustle. I remember I had two jobs and I was making cranberry sauce at the, on the side to sell at the Amish market, you know, cause people give me, you know, from the bogs in Wisconsin, they give me free cranberries. And so I'd mix it up and I made this great cranberry sauce, you know, but it was always trying to do something. And after a while, the trauma got to the point in my life between just trauma adding up and then the brain injuries to where I couldn't process anymore. I couldn't process in any way, shape or form how I would go about picking myself back up. Um, so that's. I think that when we think of displacement, we think of it being one cut and dry, you know, act or catalyst. But in reality, trauma upon trauma upon trauma adds up. And the more trauma you experience, the worse it is. And I think at a certain point, once you hit that, you're just, you need you need people to invest in, in you as a human being and realize that you're able to be worth coming up. Um, I'm going to address some comments. Oh, hi, Jason. Hello from Seattle. Melissa, it's been a while since I tuned in. How's the situation with your son and grandchildren? Um, as last I heard, they were okay. Dr. Nina, I love your place. It's so cozy. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think it's extremely cozy and it is totally my safe place. Um, I got a balcony with a great view and a vertical garden. I've got literally everything I could want for in a home. It's, you know, really just
it's a place I can think. And I find that to be so helpful <laughs> in the work I do. <laughs> um, so are there any questions? Um, otherwise, I'm just going to kind of go into what happened this week. So I had put a call out uh, for Derek to get a cell phone in, this, in service. And I we were just immediately blessed by um, C, who had sent one right away. And it was really wonderful to see someone who is used to being overlooked, especially, you know, being the fact that, you know, Derek is, you know, a white male and in everybody's viewpoint, when they're looking straight at him, they would think he had no problem working, but it's true that he has some issues and needed help. And so it was great to see him get picked up like that and to see his gratitude. And, you know, he was just ultra grateful to be given the opportunity just with a phone to be able to put that on applications. He's got three months service. It'll be great. I will say, however, um, after that, there was, it, it's, it's really never ending with the supplies that we need to keep people alive. And it, the cost of that would go down so much if we just housed people and gave them a stable base to work from and invested them in them that those ways. Um, because now there's a terminally ill homeless man that needs phone and service. Um, I was very lucky to have one of my viewers get a hold of me and get that. And that's amazing. But we still need people to visit that wish list. I have one that's personal and I have one that's outreach. And please visit the outreach one. One thing that we always need is fentanyl testing strips. Please. They are so important to the harm reduction work we're doing. Um, I will be honest, right now, the work we're doing is keeping people alive till tomorrow, keeping people alive so they can make the choice to get treatment, keeping people alive so that we can invest in them and their lives become better and they we become healthier as community and as a globe. So I, I really... You know, I'm asking for that. And of course, you know, it's cold. So I will make sure that any supplies that are sent will get out to the people that need them. So, um, Nicolette is moving out to find more on the new episode. <laughs> moving out, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's a hard, that's a hard thing. Um, Everybody has kind of got their own experience. I hope, you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, people, especially if she's got good family support and you're, you know, I know Dr. Nina that you're a very loving mother. And so I think that for the success of many, it is reliant on the family support that they have and, you know, a uh, strong support network. And so I think that's a real keystone to being successful. So I think that's great. And I'm sure that everything will work out great. Um, Melissa, can I put the information to help below? Um, yeah, it's in the description, actually, of the video. Um, is there any way you can go into the description? Because in the description, it has like all the ways. Because otherwise, I'm going to have to go and like copy and paste. Um, so ask me anything today, uh, Sunday, great. We got stuff out to uh, Seattle Harm Reduction Coalition. Um, so, I, okay, so we went to this, um, me and Rowan, we went to this thing called uh, Dirty Dog Photography and they did a fundraiser for Laura, a Seattle Dogs Homeless program. And Rowan made so many friends. Like so many friends, and it was like this open place. It was a brewery, but it was just really, really nice. And you know, there were so many dogs, and <laughs> so that was really great. That was a great fundraiser. It really helped out Seattle Dogs Homeless Program. Um, some interesting things coming up. 
Uh, Laura has been working now. She's serving um, the Soto food, food Bank. So I will be going down there on Mondays to photograph her efforts and pet on the amazing dogs that come in, <laughs> which I love. Um, I think on my Instagram, there was one of me holding Scooby who has like these ears that are just like, bing. <laughs> They're like little satellite ears. It's great. It's wonderful. So I, you know, that's, that's wonderful. And hopefully we can connect also with um, the One Health Clinic and get them in places like that as well so that we can do medical care on people and animals and kind of do this all wrap around wonderful thing. Um, so that's wonderful. Um, I am working on a grant right now um, for economic opportunities for the unhoused. And that's really interesting. And I'm learning a lot. So it's like great. Um, it's a great learning experience because I'm there's a lot that goes into all of these things. And so um, the more I can learn, the happier I am. So that's about right now, just and getting out, you know, getting out the supplies, making sure people stay alive, reaching out and networking. I am so excited because on the 20th, the developer of the app Strapped, which is S-T-R-A-P-P-D, is going to be coming to give our service providers a training session and how to actually effectively use the app so that um, it is real time as far as like shelter beds that are open, services that are open, who they can contact. Um, it could possibly, if we can implement the system, get rid of some of the referral systems so that we are getting people efficiently into places. It's really, really important. So I am super, super excited to be hosting that. Um, ordered my business cards. <laughs> so that's kind of what's going on. And um, I am so thankful. I am thankful to everybody that puts forth this loving kindness and acts on that. And, you know, like we had 12 big blankets to hand out today and fentanyl testing strips and hoodies and hats. You know, those things matter. They matter a lot. And they matter so much to people who just don't have them. So I just want to put out this huge, huge thank you to those that, you know, really make an effort to, to lend their support. It's important. Thank you. And for those that lend their support to me and what I do, I appreciate it. It's, it's amazing. Um, let's see. I got Blair a pug yesterday and she's in love. <laughs> right. Aww. Yeah, dogs are like the best. <laughs> Mine is chilling on the sofa right now. <laughs> um, the app is really cool. I am I am really excited about it. I think that it could really um, be a game changer in some of our service providing. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot going on and it's really, really exciting. Um, of course, it's a lot of time spent researching and pacing the house constantly. <laughs> But, um, Roxy, I enjoyed the talk you gave recently. Are plenty more speaking opportunities? Yes, I am actually. Um, what there's a lot of different avenues that I myself as a consultant work, and one of those right now is harm reduction. And so, I think that we need to start educating some of our hardest hit areas, which are rural areas, and what harm reduction is, what it means, what it isn't. Um, and really in state uh, evidence-based programs. Um, also, we are working on um, looking at some environmental measures, like uh, looking at what, like say, for example, I lived under a bridge. Well, that's on contaminated land. So what are gonna be the health effects of having to have lived on a contaminated land that wasn't contaminated by me, but contaminated by the urban population around me? And so um, I want to look at some of those things. Um, looking at uh, trauma-informed employment models for those who have experienced um, homelessness or being displaced. Um, gosh, there's just so much going on and there's so many facets and it's really amazing. And I am, 
I, I have to tell you, like, seriously, I am super blessed to work with the amazing people that I do. They are on it. They are smart and phenomenal. And I just cannot give enough thank yous out to them for, you know, really coming together and having this ab amazing brain power on figuring out, you know, issues that issues that are system issues, but maybe wouldn't be realized by a population that doesn't have lived experience. So um, yeah, I definitely am going to do speaking events. Um, pretty much at this point, it is um, by request only. Um, so if somebody was to have an event and they wanted me to speak at, they could request my presence there. Um, and we talk about that. But at this juncture, um, you know, it all depends if it's for a nonprofit, I just do it. Um, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, and I do love public speaking. It's yeah, I do like it. I don't take real good notes though. <laughs> okay, I won't forget to watch the new episode. All right, you all, I appreciate you so very much. Um, if you haven't, thank you, Megan, I appreciate that. Um, if you haven't joined my Instagram, please do so. It kind of gives you, it'll give you a little more insight as to what I'm doing. Um, and kind of the impact that is made just by, you know, putting calls out to as many people as you can, because honestly, I will tell you, I, this is living proof that this is a global effort. It, you know, it isn't helping our own, it's helping our own in a global way. And I find it so beautiful, like absolutely beautiful. Um, it would be so awesome to see you and Mark Taylor. Yeah. Okay. Well, everybody, you have a wonderful night and I will be back on later. Dr. Nina, I will make sure to watch that in just a little bit. Oh, what is my Instagram? Sorry. <laughs> I say that and then I don't put it up there. It is Amanda J. Butcher. There. That's my Instagram. All right, you guys have a wonderful evening. I appreciate you. If you're feeling like you can donate or whatever, please go on there. Um, there's a PayPal and there's two wish lists. Um, keep in mind, number one need right now is fentanyl testing strips and warm stuff. Well, besides housing, but in healthcare, because that's a given. Like, I don't think that we should all mention that, but it just seems like something I have to every once in a while throw in there. Um, <laughs> bye, Dr. Nina. You guys have a great night.